Good morning, everybody. Please join us at the Kumo Theater. If you're within the sound of my voice, come on in and bring your coffee. Our first speaker taking the stage here from AWS. Some great information for you. So I would like to introduce, without further ado, and I'm going to need to hear like a rock star's welcome for you. I know it's early, but you've had... I can cheer for myself. Yeah, they've <laughs> had some caffeine. So big cheer, please, for Bridget Johnson. Hey. All right. Welcome everyone and good morning. Thank you for coming to spend some time to learn about policies. So a few weeks ago, we launched a new visual editor uh, to create policies. And what are policies for, just to kind of level set, is so you can grant access to AWS services, resources, maybe your developers, maybe your applications, whatever, whatever you need to grant access to. And so what the visual editor does and what I'm going to show you today is more about how it walks you through one creating and modifying. So I want to call out those two components. One, if you don't have any policies in your account, you can create them, right? Maybe you want to grant access to an S3 bucket. We'll walk through that today. Or allow somebody to launch instances. You can create them. The cool part about the editor, which is new, is that you can modify them in the same way that you create them. Also, though, if you have existing policies in your account, you can go click on Edit, and now it'll actually walk you through and it'll tell you what errors you have. So if you've ever, who's created a policy? I, there was some, yes, yes, OK, we had some maybes. So if you have policies in your account and you're like, I'm not sure if they work or not um, without testing everything, the editor will actually uh, show you, hey, this is right, this is wrong, and go from there. So I'm just going to go and start with a demo. And then I'll take some questions if you want. So this is my, this is our goal, right? Um, we're going to allow Larry access to use the S3 console um, and to uh, read files from his own folder. We have a home directory. There's Larry. There's Casey. For the purposes of the demos, Larry is a developer, and he's going to be in Firefox. Okay, he's logged into the console of Firefox. I am admin. I am a trusted admin. I have admin privileges. And I'm going to be logged into Chrome. So when you see me flip between the two, know that one I'm using Larry, and the other one is admin, and that's me. Best practices is to scope your permissions to only what people need access to. So Larry only needs to read objects from his home folder for now. We're going to give him more permissions later. All right, so let's get started. So this is Larry. And I'm just going to refresh, and I'm going to show you right now, Larry's a user. Larry has no policies attached to him, and he has no permissions because we deny by default. The network might be a little slow, but here we go. Nothing. Larry has access to nothing. And your job as an admin is to fix that. OK? So let's go and try to fix it. I am admin, and I want to just show you, this is what my console looks like for S3. There's a couple buckets in there. I can go navigate around. I want Larry to be able to see this bucket here. This has some resources in my dev account, for example. All right, so let's go create a policy, right? I could grant S3 full access, but I don't want to do that. Larry's, you know, he's maybe a little unpredictable at times. So, and if your name's Larry, by the way, I completely apologize. It's totally just a friend of mine that I'm making fun of. All right, so let's create a policy. So I'm in the IAM console. This is the IAM console. If you go to the main AWS console and click IAM, you'll land actually on this dashboard. I clicked on Policies. And I'm going to create a policy. Here's all my existing policies I've already created. And this is the new editor. Cool part about the editor is you can switch back between your point and click choices and this wonderful JSON. When we launched this editor, we did not break up with JSON. We just gave him a little bit of a makeover, you know, hang out. Okay. One part I love about this editor is, guess what? Andy said it this morning. We have over 100 AWS services, right? There are a lot of them. So you could scroll through if you wanted to. But we know it's S3, so all I'm going to do is type S3. Pretty nice. Now, this is also one of my favorite parts of the editor. There's a lot of actions. When you get into IAM and EC2, there's over 150. Okay? They're hard to figure out what to do. So two things that can help you. One is we've categorized these into different levels. So we have list. That allows you to view the existence of a resource, but not the contents. Read allows you to read the contents. 
Um, so if you think you can see the object, but you can't look at the picture if it's a picture, read allows you to actually get that object and then open the picture. Write is anything mod modifying. It's a very broad group. Any modification API call falls into this bucket. And permissions management. If you're an admin, this is something you want to watch out for. You should not be granting everyone permissions management actions. Those should be, those should be held for those trusted people who don't go out and play too much blackjack and drink too much beer. OK. So I'm going to select, um, because I want Casey to be able to do this from the console, I'm going to say, hey, list and read. All right. Now, if I care about what these read are, I can actually look at this list. And what I really want to do is talk about get object. And if I don't know what it means, I can click on this question mark. And look, it, tells me, it gives me a definition and some other things that I can work on. So this helps you figure out, should I give Larry that access or should I not? List and read are pretty safe for the most part, um, depending on what data you have. All right, third favorite feature is this resources. A lot of times, people don't know what they can scope down and what they can't scope down. And the editor will actually prompt you and say, you can put a bucket in here, and it will be OK. And so we're going to do that. And the way I'm just going to click Edit. And so I'm going to add an arm, because I'm going to specify a bucket. And just to make things easier, I had this copied and pasted. So this is the bucket that I pointed out. I'm going to click Add. Now. I gave Larry access to the bucket, but I really want him only to read certain objects. And that was in his home slash Larry folder. Okay? So I'm going to add the object here. And this is cool, because you don't have to go searching for the ARN. You just give us the information that we need, and we'll build it for you. So you put in the bucket name. And here, I'm going to say, hey, there's home, and there's slash Larry. And after that, and you can see it's building the ARN for me. I'm just going to put in star. So he can go and grab anything in that folder, essentially. And I'll click Add. Now, if you want to, you can add some conditions, like is MFA enabled source IP, or you can go explore. Our next demo, we're going to show the conditions part. So I'm going to review this policy. I'm going to give it a quick name. I'm making this a super specific name just because i got to keep my account clean for my other demos today. And I'll create the policy. And you can see also, I just want to show you one more thing, that it gives you a summary of the access. And you can drill down. Or you can read the JSON. And it shows you all the JSON. But guess what? You don't have to if you don't want to. All right. Last step is I'm going to add permissions to Larry for S3. I've kept one policy there just so. Um, we can encourage everyone to use roles for EC2, but we'll talk about that in a second. And I'll just search for Larry. Oh, look, there's my policy. I'm going to add that permission. All right, I'm going to go back to Larry in this console. If I refresh, what is going to happen? Someone tell me. What? No error. Did I, is that what you said? It's pretty loud in here. Everyone's just so much energy. So this is kind of cool. I gave access to list buckets. So I should be able to see the existence, right? But I won't be able to dig into them. And you can actually see right then and there, as, as soon as it pops up, three, two, one, I can't get into those first two buckets. I'm Larry. I can't get in. But I can get in here. Remember, we gave Larry lists, so he should be able to see the existence of things. And then we'll go into home. And I'm going to try Casey, because maybe he made a typo or accidentally clicked on something. Um, this is my favorite photo. And I'm going to try to download it. And what's going to happen? Access denied. Why? Because we didn't give Larry access to Casey's folder. We only gave Larry access to Larry's folder. OK? I'll go back. And. I'm going to go try to get into um, Larry's folder. What's going to happen? Yes or no? Yeah. All right. So let's go into Larry's folder. And you know, hey, I love Montana. So I'm going to click on it. Oops. Download. And I have success, and I'll be able to see it. Good stuff, right? 
If you are a ninja, instead of typing Larry in that field where I typed in the policy editor, you can type in a policy variable called username. And then you can attach the same policy to Casey, Larry, Bob, Joe, Jill, whoever you want. Ninja move, look it up. All right, ready to move on to EC2? All right, so this is, I know I'm moving fast, but it's supposed to be a fast demo. So this is our goal. We're going to allow Larry access to launch EC2 instances. But we're only going to allow him to launch it of, in the T2 family. And I'm actually going to add another condition because I wanted to show you something. We're only going to allow him to use a, one security group. It's one I've already pre-configured. I don't want him messing with other security groups, so I'm only going to allow one. All right. Just because I'm going to cut down on time, I hope you trust me. Larry can't see anything in the EC2 console. Let's go solve that problem. Ready to create a policy? If you all are loud, you can scream out what I should do. What do I do here? EC2. I heard it. All right, EC2. I'm going to select Actions. I want Larry to use the console. What do I select? List and I'm actually going to give him read because I, you know, he's not that bad. All right, fun fact. Launch instances is a run instance call. So we need the run instance API. So I'm going to actually type here, and I get it. Look at all of these resources I can scope down, right? You can literally go and play with all of these. And so let's do that. We list all the actions. All right. I don't care what image Casey or Larry uses. I don't care what instance. I will add a condition later. I don't care what key pair. He only actually has access to one. I don't care what network interface, placement group, but I do care what security group, right? So let's add that ARN. Once again, we only ask you for what we need. So I'll put this in here. I'm going to put my account ID in here. You should change it with your own. And this is my security group ID. And I'm going to add that, OK? And everything else, I don't care. What, did, what am I missing? What's the one thing I forgot? T2, man in the striped shirt, got it. OK, so here's some request conditions. I'm going to add a condition. Fourth coolest part, I kind of lost track. All of these are keys that are applicable to what the actions you selected. So I can go and I'd be like, wow, I can do tag keys. I can do encrypted or not, image type. I'm going to choose instance type. And then I'll say string like, because I want to be able to use star. I'm actually going to choose if exists, because the, the instant type only applies to the instance resource type. It doesn't apply to security group, um, network interface, key pair, et cetera. So only if the instance type value is in the world are we going to validate it. And here I'll tick T2 star, and I'll add that. Want to show you this right now? You can flip back and forth between JSON and the visual editor. Um, if you need to, like let's say you wanted to grant EC2 and S3 in the same policy, you just add, add another permission here and do the same thing. But for today, I'm just going to do once. I'm going to review the policy. I'm going to give it a name and a description. So we did security group and T2 instances. I got to go fast because they're going to kick me off stage soon. Create the policy. And I'm going to go to Larry. Maybe he's over here. Nope. And I'm going to add that policy. I also have a pass role. If you're using EC2, I suggest you use roles for EC2. Um, and that way you need instances. Do this. Add permission. All right, going over to the EC2 console. I'm refreshing. Should I be able to see the instances now, yes or no? Yes, awesome. OK, here we go. Should I be able to launch an instance? A T2 instance, there we go. So I'm going to try it right now. I'm actually going to show you the fail case first. This is M4. You see that right there? I'm going to just do launch more like this. And uh, I will launch. Click this. 
fail, right? Why? Because it's M4. We didn't give Casey, or Larry access to M4. All right, so we'll cancel that one. And our last test will be ECT2. I want to make sure there's no tags. I didn't give Larry any tagging permissions yet. Launch more like this. We'll launch. We'll do this. And look, it worked. Okay. I, all those instances were in that security group. I could type in a different security group if you want to see that fail case. Super cool. So if you have something, another point I want to call out, I know I'm done, is that if you have existing policies, you can use them to fix. And if you use a service that calls other services, the editor will actually prompt you. Directory service is a great example. If you give directory service access, it also needs some EC2 access. And it will prompt you for that. So it's awesome. All right, thank you all so much for your time and enjoy your rest of your day at reInvent.